everyone and welcome back to another episode of Jell of Girls. It's your girl Amy Taylor and today co-hosting with me is Aisha Kulka. Good morning. <laughs> so uh, we celebrated uh, World Menstrual Hygiene Day on the 28th of May and I deemed it necessary to you know invite um, the founder of Girls Pride Fatumata Kasama to talk to us about everything that is pertaining to menstrual hygiene, the things that are coming with it, what you feel, what you experience, and all of that. So, Fatumata, how are you? I'm fine, Ami. You guys, Fatumata is the best person ever. So, I, I contacted Fatumata in such a you know, short amount of time, a short space, and mm -hmm. she made it to the platform. So, I am very thankful for that, Fatumata. It's a pleasure. <laughs> So, um, Fatmata, I would just like you to give a background to our viewers about mm. what Girls Pride is and what do you guys offer? Girls Pride is a social enterprise uh, that provides reusable sanitary products, sexual and reproductive health education, uh, comic story books uh, to address uh, issues that are affecting adolescents in the Gambia. Mm -hmm. So, uh, we F provide different sanitary products. We have uh, reusable sanitary pads that we provide. We have reusable period panties. These are panties that has pad attached to it. We also have uh, reusable panty liners that we make. And we do different uh, trainings too. We train women and girls on menstrual health and hygiene management. We train them on how to make reusable sanitary pads on their own at community level using locally available materials. Um, we also provide one-on-one -on -one counseling for women and girls who have uh, reproductive health issues. Let's say uh, you have vaginal infections or you have issues with uh, men menstrual hygiene management that you want to clarify. You, you don't want to go to the hospital or you cannot discuss it with your friends or parents. So you can come to us. We can have uh, that conversation with you. Yeah, I, we have a shop at Talili uh, where we do all those things. We do our production and then we do our counseling. There. Most of the trainings we do, we do it in the community because we are focusing in less privileged uh, women and girls. Yeah. Yeah, so uh, I would say 90% of our activities or target is people who live in rural Gambia. Okay. Yeah, we also do uh, comic storybooks. It's something that I'm writing and the storybook is about uh, puberty, menstruation, and other reproductive health issues that affect in girls. So the concept is since it's a taboo in the community, people cannot discuss this with their children. Yeah. So uh, the, the comic book is going to give boys and girls, you know, men, women, everybody the opportunity. You can just walk into a store, you get the book, and then at your own time, sit down and read, yeah. know everything about puberty. And the book is not just going to discuss puberty in women, we're going to address both sexes. Wow. So w men get to know about themselves, and because these are people that are neglected when we talk about reproductive exactly. health. So we don't want to talk <laughs> about <laughs> men, men's, men's reproductive health. It's something very important that we should always include. Mm -hmm. And um, when we want to break the taboos and uh, uh, the stigmas around Menstruation, sure. we have to involve men and the boys, so it's important. That is why the comic book is targeting both men and, and, and girls. And this year, we want to introduce uh, the period game. It is mm -hmm. uh, an amazing game that I came across, and then I've contacted uh, yeah, the, the founder, and she's, she's ready to, to, to work with you. Yeah, send me the game so I can introduce it in the Gambia. So the game is about uh, puberty, menstruation, and the menstrual products. So it can be used in schools, you know, peers can use it at family level. So you can be in your house, your mom, dad, and the, the kids can just play the game. It's just like scrabbling or cards that you can use. Mm -hmm. You know, it will tell you everything about from puberty, mm -hmm. you know, physiology of menstruation. So it's an amazing game. I can't wait uh -huh. to introduce yes. this in the game. I can't wait either. <laughs> like uh, when you spoke of the comic books, that, that is one way you can connect to people of nowadays because people need pictures to demonstrate certain stuff and yeah. it, it going to, it's going to portray more message because they say a picture is worth a thousand right, words. Right. So you're going to see everything and you'll be able to learn from it. And also the board games, I believe the period game, mm -hmm. that would be very good. Like if it's introduced in the Gambia, mm -hmm. most definitely most children or most people yes. that are, yeah, 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 that, that, yeah, that is the target. Um, 
I just want to get the game and see how uh, to collaborate with the Ministry of Education so we yeah, can introduce yeah. this in, in you schools, you know. From primary school. From primary, yeah. yeah, because some people start menstruation when they're in grade five, grade you know, yeah. grade five, four. Yeah. So you can have this period game as part of the science subject, you know, exactly. sessions, you know. Exactly. We don't have to be in class uh, talking about theories, drawing. Uh -huh. So we, we need breaks, you know, you can have a, a session, break, break sessions where uh, kids can have simulation exercises, workshops, something that is going to be amazing. Mm -hmm. So they can have these games that both boys and girls, you can, the teacher can just pair them in groups, you know, they play the game, mm -hmm. you know, everybody, like F -F 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 in, in, yeah, yeah, so, so everybody gets to know about the game, the menstruation, puberty and all that. It's, it's, I, I believe it's going to be something amazing. It is going to be something amazing. Yeah. But Marisa, when we, um, when we introduce this, the fact that they like, they can easily talk about it because in a we platform a where, exactly, in a platform where someone is strict telling you this and this is what is going to be there, in a game form, the guy gives you four, you cannot understand now these things will be uh, like embedded in their mindset. I it, think it will Yeah, be I watched the game, uh, a family playing the game with the kids. So it's like the game is going to, to force you to know about the period. Okay. And like with the game, I will ask you, you have to crack your brain. Okay, this is the product I need uh, during menstruation. This is the number of days. This is the day, you know, evolution. It tells you everything. Wow. Yes. Yeah, so yeah. that would be an amazing game. So I see you when you're talking. You talk with so much passion. You're so passionate about the this things game. that you do. Yeah. The game, mm -hmm. the uh, the comic books about menstrual hygiene as a whole. So please teach us or tell us where did this passion come from? So as a young girl, I grew up uh, in a community where the taboo is just there. The so nobody talks house. talks mm -hmm. about it. So uh, I never had this conversation with my mother or father or sisters. So uh, I had the little knowledge I had on menstruation from the family life education mm -hmm. that I did in St. Teresa's. So to Miss Joy, my teacher, thank you so much for this uh, mm -hmm. knowledge. So I was able to take care of myself you know it was a rough journey and i had the opportunity to 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 get some knowledge from my friends so um my friends the, the time we were in grade seven everybody uses freedom pad so i had oh, to yeah, make sure exactly. i also have freedom pad so what i do is um, my mom never gives me money to buy pad or she doesn't buy parts for me so what i do is when i go to school i have to save part of my lunch so that I can buy this part. At the end of the month. Yeah, so it was it was a rough journey. You don't know how to take care of yourself, you know, very well. Sometimes you stay in your cell, you know, and then it, it's, you have pain, you don't know how to take exactly. care of the pain. You know, I, I do miss school, and or sometimes when it's time for tests, you know, my performance will be affected. And I'm those people who want to have A, you know, in everything you do, you know? Exactly. <laughs> and you know, it, it affects, yeah, it affects me psychologically. And then um, I used to go to my mom's village and then I see how young, young girls, you know, use rags and then they will stain themselves. And then working as a nurse too, um, this is my eighth year experience wow. in nursing, but currently I do freelance nursing. So, but uh, one of the things that motivated me to, to start Girls Pride is because I think I have this knowledge that I need to give back to people, especially uh, young people in rural communities, you know, that who do not have access to all these opportunities. When, you, when, when we come to urban areas, we have access to internet, you know, smartphones. We can always Google or we can even talk to our friends. But in rural Gambia, that's not the case. You know, we can watch TV and see all those stuff, or you can go to YouTube and Google, see whatever you want to see, but it's, it's a different case in community. Mm -hmm. So that is why most of my focus and targets are people in rural community. Mm -hmm. So um, last year I had this opportunity to <coughs> implement my period, my pride project that was okay, funded. For the, do you think it is hygienic for um, certain girls to be using any kind of material when they're seeing their period? It is not. That is why we have displayed all these things and we're going to discuss them in detail. Mm -hmm. uh, so people have their choices, you know, you know what and you can um, afford yeah. or you know what is good for your body. Mm -hmm. or, what your yeah, is, so if, exactly. if you're an environmentalist, you know, okay, I don't want to use disposable parts, mm -hmm. you know. Mm -hmm. yeah. if, if you don't want to use disposable parts or you want to use some, a product that you can use and swim with it, you have different options. So we have 
a whole, a whole lot of options mm -hmm. out there that people can use. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, definitely we'll review those products. But also to, uh, this year's theme is periods in pandemics. So I see that so many people are going out there educating people about periods in pandemic, uh, pandemics, how to take care of themselves and all of that. So what are you doing in this pandemic to educate people on how to maintain a good menstrual hy uh, hygiene? Yes, so because of the recommendations that people should uh, respect social distancing, mm -hmm. we have stopped all our contacts with mm -hmm. young girls that we train. So right now, Girls Pride is using its platform on, on Facebook and Instagram to provide digital uh, messages on menstruation. Mm -hmm. So we start from the definition of what is period, what are the products you need, the services, who is a menstruator, mm -hmm. and puberty, you know, everything that you need. So we give in bits, like we don't overload people with information. Yeah. Yeah, so exactly. we just give you a little information yeah, and digest, yeah, so yeah. you digest yeah. that the next day. So we do a daily update on our Facebook page. So those who want to uh, get all this information, they can follow yeah. us. So, and we want to take it forward from even after the pandemic, because I, I, I see that it's important we have that information exactly. online that yeah. anybody can come anytime and, and then, yeah, it. because when you do this uh, on one-to-one -one or in communities mm -hmm. or even on, on TV, not everybody has that data to go yeah. online and listen to it. But if it is there, I can always go in and scroll and read. And it's then, always uh, there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So currently, this is what we're doing, providing uh, the comprehensive and accurate information online. Yeah. Okay. Before we move on to reviewing this amazing product, um, I would just like you to talk about everything, because most people would think that menstruation just come periods they just come as they are it's just a normal flow of blood that you should be uh, emitting or it should come out of your body but another thing that people don't know that it comes with so many so many things like it comes with pain it comes with dizziness it comes with so, uh, most of the time free bowels and all of that so can you just explain the few things that people might experience because people think that it's abnormal some people feel pain and immediately they think okay it's, there's something wrong with me so explain all the normal things that one might experience when they uh, experience when they're having their period and also those that see it more than once or twice a month yes so that. yeah so periods are normal processes just like sleeping, eating, going to the yeah. toilet. Mm -hmm. So it's normal. We can talk about it. You know, some uh, a girl should not be same. You know, in that community because she's <coughs> seeing her period. I always tell pe uh, people it's because of periods the world exists. Exactly. You know, <laughs> without periods, you know, you can you can get pregnant. Sure. And uh, the, the fact that when your child doesn't see her period, it's an issue. She, 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 she has a problem, you start t taking her from one hospital or one marabou to the other. But when she yeah. starts seeing her period, you yeah, know, you want to put all the shame and the stigma <laughs> on her, yeah. which is stressful. So period, it's, it's the normal flow of blood, you know, from the uterus, that's the, the womb. Mm -hmm. So the blood doesn't come from the vagina, it comes from the womb, but it passes through the vagina. Okay. And then uh, I've learned that many people, many girls, you know, they don't know that uh, the urine doesn't come from the vagina. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. women have uh, two different openings. Mm -hmm. I would say three actually. Mm -hmm. So you have the rectum where the, so like this, you have the rectum here mm -hmm. where the stool comes out. Oh, yeah. So you have an opening in the middle, you know, that is the vaginal opening. Mm -hmm. And you have a small opening up on top that yeah. is where the urine comes from but uh i've learned that many girls didn't know, that. know that and you also have tiny openings around the vaginal walls that produce uh, mucus and secretions that is why the vaginal op the vaginal vulva area is always moist and moist, yeah so uh, it's important we learn this anatomy and physiology that is something we do at girls pride mm -hmm. you know we teach girls about every part of their reproductive system and then the functions of it and what are the abnormalities so that you you can know because like breast cancer you need to know the normal yeah, yeah exactly. and then the, you can now detect so the same thing about the, the vagina area the mm -hmm. vulva so um aside from the bleeding women <coughs> face a lot of issues when it comes to period so we have what we call premenstrual syndromes this comes 
days before the period so uh, you can have <coughs> acne breast tenderness it can be painful you mm -hmm. can have discomfort you know you can have nausea you exactly. know you can have uh, floss flashes of light flashes hot flashes oh. like your thighs you know you feel heat inside you can have abdominal pain your back waist pain, pain back pain yeah. you can have all those things and the, the worst part that I feel is I get mood swings, very bad but mood swings. Everyone gets like them. I don't want to talk to anybody. Yeah, exactly. You're like, don't talk to me right now. I, and you, you can't just like it's something that you can't figure out. No, you, like, it's, no. you're in your period, yes. But you're like, why am I like this? You can't stop yourself from being like that. Like nothing is wrong with you. Like for me, it starts way before my period. Nothing is wrong with me. We will just be sitting suddenly, like I'm gone like i don't want to talk to you i don't want to do anything everything yeah. becomes boring i'm not interested in anything it's something that affects my work and my production and concentration and i know a lot of women are facing or going through that so when it comes to the period you know seeing the blood alone it's it's stressful exactly. you know having to deal with that every 28 days or every 30 days okay. you know it's it's stressful couple the, you know this coming with the pain and the, and the cravings as well that that's the <laughs> stupidest part of it like you <laughs> you want to eat food that are not even in season yeah. sometimes just like so a pregnant woman it's, it's normal you Man, get come on solom 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 and sometimes it's not in season so you go about looking for the closest things to solom solom oh. it's really like a period your period has a mind of its own yeah like, because it's hormonal related everything it's it's controlled by the hormone mm -hmm. so you start feeling something different you having the pain and the pain is because of the physiology because when every month the womb will start uh, preparing itself the egg will be released every uh, minute <coughs> of your menstrual cycle so that's the ovulation. When the egg is released, it will come to the womb. When the womb will also prepare itself, waiting for the egg to be fertilized for implantation. So if there is no, no, if the person doesn't have unprotected sex, it means there will be no sperm fertilizing that egg. Mm -hmm. So that way, the, the, the womb, the body doesn't need all those nutrients and the that blood vessels and the egg again. Mm -hmm. So that is what breaks the womb will the lining of the womb will break mm -hmm. so the breaking of the the lining of the womb mm -hmm. it that is what causes the pain because it's from contraction the I contraction know. and the relaxation of the yeah. womb uh, the muscles causes the pain so during that you have pain some have mild pain some have severe pain some have real bad pain yeah. you know they have to some go to the hospital pain. yeah some will go to the hospital yeah. get injected you exactly. know put on drips you know you have to be be admitted and all that so yeah. it's so much pain but some some people don't feel pain. any pain, pain at, at all, all. Yeah. so i am jealous of those people <laughs> that do not feel pain at all yeah. so we are different individuals you know god created us in different ways you know mm -hmm. we can all be women but we will all dif uh, experience different things at different stages of our life you know we can all be menstruating at the same time mm -hmm. but what i'm going to feel will be different from what you're going so to feel the energy. amount of blood you're going to lose will be different yeah, you know so yeah so it's important that we all know that your maybe your friend uses this kind of product it's not good for you so explore different things and mm -hmm. see what works for you what and you and you. you use it so with the blood coming out, you know, you need things that can help you because sometimes the pain, it has to prevent you from going to school, from going to work or even doing your chores at home. Mm -hmm. So if you know that you have severe pain during menstruation, you know, you need to plan and prepare yourself for that pain. You mm -hmm. know, there are drugs around. So you cannot say like a friend of mine will say, uh, you know, I'm not taking drugs because woman would comes with pain. I'm wow. like, I'm not going to get any like pain exactly. and when there are I'm drugs available, <laughs> no, I'm going to get the drugs. So we have different drugs available over the counter that you can walk into any pharmacy to buy. Mm -hmm. So we have drugs like paracetamol, uh, diclofenac, uh, buscopam, that <gasps> painkillers that you can use, use, you know. But if you are in a situation, yeah, they can ease the pain. Uh, paracetamol, diclofenac and others, they work work for a lot of people but many people don't want it like especially paracetamol because gambians we ab abuse paracetamol exactly. a, lot, a lot that some people become uh, addicted to it or it doesn't work for them but mm -hmm. we have these drugs like they are muscle relaxants they relax the abdominal wall muscles they are buscopam 
it has uh, it comes in the form of tablets and then injections that you can use but it's always advisable when you're taking over-the-counter drugs or self-medicating you take tablets and you need to follow the prescriptions like oh, yeah. you don't have mm -hmm. to self-medicate so that's why it's good you can go to the pharmacy get those drugs but follow the prescriptions okay. don't say i took one pill it i still have pain i have to take another pill okay. because the, the the drug has to go through the blood and then exactly. before it starts working you mm -hmm. cannot just take it Im immediately and mm -hmm. it starts working so this is something very important if you have pain please 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 you know go to the pharmacy yeah. get the drugs and if it is a day before your period, you start having those pains and discomfort, you can start taking the drug to make so, just to, to prevent yeah, all that and, yeah. severe pain that, that can prevent you from even getting off your bed. You know, yeah. sometimes you just have to be lying in that bed like a dead person. Exactly. <laughs> Going through pain, unimaginable pain. Yeah. So before we move on, because I, I, I really want you guys to get to know what, what the, products that she, the products that she brought today on the platform, but I want us to talk about a little bit about the stigma that is surrounding talking about certain stuff like uh, periods and all of that. I know certain people are not even comfortable, certain people are not even comfortable talking about uh, saying the word vagina. Like they feel like it's something that we should not say out loud and it's something that we should definitely say out loud because we're educating people about it. So please just tell me a little bit about Gambia's stigma towards discussing such uh, issues. So I think uh, for me, the, the vagina is, is a body part. It's just like the mouth, the ears, and the nose. So if you can call the, the mouth and the ears out loud anywhere, you can talk about or say the word vagina. Exactly. Yeah, because it's part of the body. Mm -hmm. I don't know who brought the name vagina and why people don't want to hear the name. Exactly. But, or maybe we should change the name to something, something that else. Then we can say it. <laughs> so we have a lot of stigma and taboos in the Gambia. It's not just in the Gambia, it's all over the world, even in developed countries. You know, people cannot just go out and talk about period or their body part. Um, women's health is important, but the most important is women's reproductive health. And when we talk about women's reproductive health, um, sexual health is important. You know, vaginal health is important, important because these are things that if you don't take care of them, you can have issues like for example if you cannot take care of the vagina or the vulva area you can have issues uh, infections like you can have urinary tract infections you can okay. have re uh, reproductive tract infections and when these infections become recurrent all the time you know you can be, you can be predisposed to infertility and which means if you get mm -hmm. married now the woman has that problem in the family and we all know so infections, uh, it's all about poor hygiene. hygiene. So that's why it's very important we have, we maintain good hygiene, whether during menstruation or not, you know. Mm -hmm. Women need to know the products that they need to use and then how to change. So it's always important. Please use cotton pants, cotton underwear, mm -hmm. exactly. you know. The, 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 the vagina and the vulva area needs to breathe. You know, use products that, or, or, or Clothing. Generally, it's, it's, yeah. generally, it's advisable to use cotton clothings and clothings that are not too tight uh, yeah. because you need uh, the area to, to breathe. Use yeah. breathable materials. You don't need it so tight because warm and, and sweat, you know, they encourage the, the growth of bacteria. Okay. And these bacteria will now start giving you uh, itching, vaginal mm -hmm. discharges, mm -hmm. odor, and all that. Mm -hmm. And if you use pants that are not cotton, you know, you, you, you use part on that, the vagina area becomes so moist, you know, yeah. the heat, and plus the blood, mm -hmm. yeah, wow. that is when you have the odor. Exactly. And if you have poor, poor hygiene in that, you don't, you don't clean your, wash your hands with soap and water before you touch the vagina area or after, you know, you can, pre like, we touch everything. Exactly. You touch your exactly. phone, you touch money, you get into vehicle. Now you just went to the restroom and touch your vagina. Exactly. That means all the infections or all the microorganisms, the uh -huh. bacteria you've touched, mm -hmm. now you've exposed yourself to, to it. it. And also those people that will be um, seeing their period and also having sex at the same time. So um, those are things that are taboo, you know, I, I a no-go area, you don't, you don't talk about in the yeah. community, but it's happening. Mm -hmm. People are, people see their periods and they have sex. And I've, I've read an article uh, that says, you can do that, but when it comes to mm -hmm. religious-wise, like, 
it's a no-go area. You cannot do it. Uh, I, I don't know for Christianity, but for Muslim. Islam, you know, when a woman is menstruating, you cannot have sex, <laughs> even if the woman is your wife. So um, they have products that you can use, uh, like the menstrual uh, cup. This is a menstrual cup. Mm -hmm. But there is another one. It's the dicks. So it's just like the female condom. Okay. Yeah, yeah. it's it's mm -hmm. wider than this, but you know it. It's this shape, but it has a rubber cover mm. on so it. what is this all about? Okay, yeah, let's move on so, to the review so, of the So, product. yeah, let me just okay. complete that part. Yeah. So, um, right. from, from the research I've done, women who want to have sex during their period can use the menstrual dicks mm -hmm. because that's going to cover up the service. The blood will come in, it will collect it, and then it won't be messy. Mm -hmm. Yeah, oh, okay. yeah. So, um, you can also use different stuff, but I think just hi to be in a hygienic way yeah. and then uh, just to, because you're having pain, so you should not be thinking of sex. But if you want to do it, it's fine. Exactly. You know, it's, for it's me, I choice. think it's individual choice. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So let's move on to the reviewing of the products. Uh, what do you have for us today? Like, take us through the products that you brought today. So today we have different products. We have disposable and reusable sanitary products. Mm -hmm. So I'll take you through that. But before that, I'll explain uh, why I have this. This That's is a, a very nice uh, this bracelet. Is a, yeah, this is <laughs> called a menstruation bracelet. This? Yeah. yeah. So um, we have 28 beads here. Five of these beads are red. So this is introduced this year by the Was uh, United as the menstruation uh, uh, symbol. So it means globally now, mm -hmm. everybody doing campaign about menstruation, this is what you're going to use. Just like the red ribbon for HIV and AIDS mm -hmm. and cancer. Mm -hmm. oh. So this is the menstruation symbol that we can use to raise awareness and also campaign, you know, uh, involve government to change or influence policies like r removing tax from parts, uh, exactly. you know, or providing uh, free parts to schools, school girls, mm -hmm. or providing safe spaces or, or even bringing back the family life education or like what government is doing, providing a condom as part of uh, family planning services free in the hospitals. <laughs> we can advocate to have sanitary parts available in hospitals exactly. for girls that you can walk in and also just pick the part. Or we can have uh, part dispensers yeah. in communities where you can just go in and get the part any in, in, in any location or drop points okay. that you can yes. go to. So we have 28 beats here. The reason why 28 is used, uh, the average cycle, menstrual cycle is 28, but it doesn't oh. mean, it means every 28 days a woman sees her period, mm -hmm. but it can be less than 28. You can have 21 day cycle, 24 day, or you can have 30 or 35. It depends on the individual. Yeah. And oh. the, the average days that a woman menstruate is five days. Okay. So that is why we have the five days. The, the, f oh. the five beats represent the fifth month of the year, which is May, and that is why May 28, that is the total number oh, of beads, wow, that is why we have May 28 as a day selected to celebrate World Menstrual Hygiene Day. day. Yeah. Oh. I'm going so. to get myself one of those bracelets. <laughs> it's even like it's fashionable, you'll be walking around, exactly. you know, you'll be exactly <laughs> yeah. around with it and you'll I be was thinking that it was just showing up. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. That's a very interesting So, concept. So the most important part is just get five red beads, okay. the other beads can be any color. Oh. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah. I'll be doing those. <laughs> uh, what other products do you have? So we have uh, reusable sanitary pads. Okay. This is a reusable sanitary pad, which is made of the flora materials. It has a breathable cotton material on top, and it also has a leak-proof materials, which means it is leak-proof. It, do oh. it, it doesn't leak. Okay. And this is the heavy flow or overnight pad that you okay. can use. I will just show you how to use this on the... Okay. But on mm -hmm. the way, so like you have the underwear like this. This is how you use it. So if you bleed very heavily, mm -hmm. you can that use one. heavy flow parts or parts that you can use overnight because you'll be sleeping. Exactly. You know, you don't know when you're going to get up. So you just take the part, place it onto the pant, and then oh, this, this is yeah, yeah, this is that looks a very button. Secure. Yeah, uh -huh. it secures it. If you don't want a part that has the buttons too, it's okay, you can have wingless parts. Wingless, yeah, okay. this is the part with the wing. So this is how it looks like. Oh. If you if you put it on, <gasps> or this way. Okay. So you can use this. 
whenever you're done, you can remove it. It's just like the way you use the other part. So this is for medium flow during the day. You know, you can use this. And also we have, it comes in different. You can have the Ankara wax, wow. you know, flora material. But whatever material you use, the top part has to be a breathable material. material. And it has to have layers of cotton materials that will absorb the blood. And you must have a leak proof material in it. So those interested in making reusable sanitary parts to donate or as a business, just get all those things. Just make sure it's safe for people to use. You cannot use the part and then get stained. Okay, so after using it, do you have to throw it or what? It's reusable. reusable. That is why we have the word reusable. So when you use this part, you wash them. Some people will say they don't want to touch blood. That's okay. Huh? <laughs> yeah. Let me see whether you can mention it and you don't and touch blood. Exactly. <laughs> and it's your blood. So, so, so but the thing is, um, use the part. When you need to change the part frequently, it depends on how you, you how heavy your flow is. It so be three to four hours. Yeah, every three to four hours or. Uh, mi max maximum six hours. That means if you are out, you yeah, have, and you know, busy. you don't have, you don't have. You can even take along something inside your bag. Yes, yeah, sometimes you can have something inside your bag, but the society we live in, we don't have mm -hmm. public toilets, and you go to certain workplaces or schools, they don't have facilities. This is one of the challenges we uh, we are having in the Gambia. A girl or a child might have sanitary products. You can manage to get your parts, mm -hmm. but now changing those parts or even. Uh, in the toilet is a problem. The toilet is messy, or you don't even have water to floss, you know, the, 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 the blood, or you don't even have water to wash your hands, yeah. Yeah. or even a bin to discard the disposable pan is not available. So these are all the challenges. We, so that is why uh, at Girls Pride we make the, the reusable part in a way that we have uh, a reusable bag, meant bag for it. So if you use this part, you are in school, if you want to change the part, because you have, uh, like this bag will contain the part, clean part. Right. So okay. you have this reusable bag. So if you go to the restroom, you just remove this, change into the clean part. Right. So this, if you have water in the restroom, just take the water. If you don't want to take the blood, it's fine. Mm -hmm. Just take the water, pour it over. The first blood doesn't stain. So it will remove all the blood. So what you can do, so the part is designed like this. Uh, just fold it this way wow and then you press it how convenient so when you do that you just put it in your mess bag hmm? mm -hmm. then get water wash your hands you can put this and the clean bag in your bag mm -hmm. go go to class you know when you get home take the part soak it in water mm -hmm. don't use hot water don't use bleach just use just water. water warm water from the tap and then use soap that doesn't have perfume you know, okay. what, soak the, the, the part, wash it, dry it on the sunlight. It's very important with reusable products. It's yeah. very important that you maintain the hygiene part of it. Mm -hmm. So wash it, clean it, use a lot of water if you have, but don't waste water. You know, but there's some people who don't have yeah. water to drink, so mm -hmm. we need to know how to use water and in a responsible way. So when you dry it, dry it out the outdoors mm -hmm. under the sun, okay. but because the sun is, is very good in, uh, Killing microorganisms. Yeah. But if you live in a community where you cannot, because of the taboo, again, you cannot <laughs> yeah. dry your parts <laughs> outside because of uh, superstition. Like if somebody takes your part now, you're finished, they're going yeah. to take you to the mother. <laughs> <laughs> yeah? Everything ah. is finished. Eh? Yeah. So just dry the part indoors if you cannot dry right. it outdoors. You know, When you dry it, if it, is dry, it will be moist at the end because mm -hmm. it, you don't have the sunlight and you don't even have good ventilation yeah, in, in, in room. Yeah. So. Um, we have girls who will take their part, like those who use the rack, they will just put it under their mattress or, you know, dry it somewhere very, very dark or moist or it has a lot of dust. So dry it some indoors. When you're drying it indoors, dry it somewhere that has good ventilation. When you're done, take an iron and iron it. Right. You know, you need it dry oh. so that you can reuse it. That is why in the package we have like five uh, parts with five heavy flow and two light flow parts so that you can change and comfortably dry your part, iron it and reuse it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So that is how you take care of it. So you don't throw it. You can use it for a minimum of one year, one year, six months. It depends on how much effort you put in taking yeah, care of the care parts. Of yeah. yeah. So uh, we also have panty, panty liners that you can use. So mm -hmm. this is uh, something you can use, uh, let's say a day, 
before your period just yeah, to make sure so you're safe flow, yeah. yeah just to make sure so you're safe or you can use it the last days in your period you know when you have spot bleedings yeah, you don't want to waste mm -hmm. part so you can use it or when you're using tampons you can use part the panty liner or for women who have vaginal discharges uh -huh. infections exactly. you can use panty liners and then if you are on contraceptives you know one of the side effects is spot bleeding <gasps> you can also use panty liners just to make sure you don't stain yourself when you go out mm -hmm. so the, the period panties too so we call i call this the backup plan the backup <laughs> <laughs> you guys have that the so, backup plan so um sometimes we don't if you don't know your menstrual calendar you cannot track mm -hmm. to say this is the day my period might mm -hmm. start yeah. but if your period is regular you understand the menstrual calendar very well you will know exactly when your period is going to start oh, yeah. so if you don't know that just get the period panties and walk around with it if you know that now you start having cramps just wear this comfortably <laughs> when the blood yeah. comes you are not worried exactly. <laughs> it's, a, it's definitely so a it's so, plan so mm -hmm. it's so convenient that when you go out you don't feel insecure or when you get up you start waiting for everybody to get up, you start telling your friend, please look behind them. <laughs> <laughs> so we also have a, a reusable sanitary product here. It's called the menstrual dix. So this is the menstrual cup. Oh. The dix is the wider one. So it's, it's, it's made of silicone. It's so flexible, mm. you know. So for, for, for these ones, when you want to discard it, you can bury it. Oh, you don't right, floss okay. them, you bury them. You bury it will take about nine months to decompose. decompose. Oh, yeah. for all my environmentalist people, you don't need to <laughs> worry because this is going to decompose. <laughs> so um, the menstrual cup, you can use it, but it, this is very sensitive for, mm -hmm. for, because it can break the hymen for women. We, yes. So if you're concerned about hymen thing, you, you might not want you to use this, you. but breaking your hymen doesn't mean you're not a virgin. Exactly. So um, you, because you can break break the vagin uh, the, the hymen can break during exercises yeah. and other things that you Grand might not know the yeah so the, for this it can last for 10 years wow which wow. means it's you're going to reduce the waste that you're going to yeah. you know going I, to yeah. the landfill so you can use this and then change every 12 hours you don't have to okay. worry about changing the cup every time every so when you get the cup when you get two of these cups you are good to go for 10 years Wow. But well, you need good hygiene exactly. to take care of it. Because this, you're going to insert this inside the vagina, which means you have to wash your hands. For what? To collect the blood. So, collect, yeah. so first of all, how to use this? Yeah. You know, wash your hands. This, you have to boil it mm -hmm. for five to ten minutes to disinfect it. Mm -hmm. Because menstrual cups are associated with something we call TSS, toxic sex syndromes. Because if uh, a research has been done that with reusable menstrual cups, you can have bacterials like the staph bacteria, mm -hmm. which are associated with toxic sock syndromes. If you don't take care of them, you can give yourself those problems and toxic sock syndromes might lead to, to death. Yeah. And, and it's, <laughs> but it's very rare. One in a thousand might have, have, have that. But if you maintain personal hygiene, you can use this safely boil the cup it's silicone so it won't nothing will happen, happen into to it. it so boil it in in hot water five to ten minutes when you remove it before you touch it wash your hands with soap and water this is where the hygiene quite, hand washing yeah. is very important in whatever we do mm -hmm. wash your hands with soap and water and make sure you don't use soap that has perfume you know we can use the normal soaps that we have why, why don't you we use uh, perfume because perfumes they they can cause reactions oh. like everybody doesn't like i don't use perfume i'm allergic to perfumes mm -hmm. and then uh, the vaginal and the vulva area is so sensitive that it's not everything that would be uh, comfortable but the moment you change the ph of the vagina you start having infection having so that's why it's always good even when washing the the maintaining feminine hygiene was in the vaginal area mm -hmm. you need to make sure you don't use uh, soaps that have perfumes or, or, or whether it is hard soap or liquid oh. soap or feminine wash just make sure it's something uh, mild you know something mm -hmm. that will not change the pH mm -hmm. level of the vagina because if not now you exposing yourself to infection mm -hmm. generally when you're menstruating your immune system goes down okay. so if you use all those chemicals that will 
alter the vagina pH level, you're complicating things. So when you wash your hands with soap and water, the vagina area, you need to wash it before you insert it. Mm -hmm. So you wash the vagina uh, area, use water from the tap, and then if you have soap, let it be mild soap without perfume again. Right. Okay. You know, yeah. wash the vulva area. But don't, don't take soap or whatever and insert it in the vagina and say you're going to wash, wash it. it. You know, don't just do that. Don't, just wash the, the, the yeah, mm -hmm. just wash the the outer layer, the outer part of it, yeah. thoroughly. And then now you have to take a position that works for you. To insert this, you have to either stand, squat, or sit on the toilet seat, because now you have to 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 give room for this to go in. Yeah. So if you wanna insert it, just hold it like this. This is the rim here and the tip. Mm -hmm. So hold it. You have different methods to fold, so you see whatever works for you. Okay. But if you can do it like this, or the C shape, so you just insert this inside the vagina. And it like, will fit? Yeah, so inside it, inside the vagina. Now the vagina wall, uh, it, it, it's, it's elastic, yeah. it, it expands, you know. So you insert it in the vagina. When it gets to the cervix, it will pop open. Oh. So the vagina pelvis will keep it in place. So the, the, the cup will be like this. Mm. So now any blood that comes from the womb, it has to pass through the service opening. It will now Go be collected. Straight. This They collect blood, like unlike the parts that absorb blood. So the blood will be there. It can uh, absorb, if, even if you bleed to 60 mils, because normally you bleed about uh, three to four tablespoons. <coughs> That's 30 to 40 mils of blood. 60 mils above is considered heavy flow. So it can collect all those amount. So you don't have, have to worry. And if you're interested in measuring how much blood flow you have on, on your menstruation, the first day or second, you can, with yeah, this, this you, can, you, yeah. can, you can know how much blood you, you lose. So insert this in the vagina. Now you can go around, do your things, you know. But anytime you insert this, come back again, wash your hands with soap and water. Mm -hmm. Because you don't want to remove uh, in bacteria from the vagina, touch stuff, kids will touch it, or even forget it. Your hand was in your vagina, now you want to eat food or, mm -hmm. you know. Mm -hmm. So it's always good to wash your hands before and after touching your genital area. Mm -hmm. So you can leave this in for a maximum of 12 hours. But you can change it frequently. So that means you have to have more than two cups if you want to do that. No. So from there, you, you, if you want to remove the cup, you just wash your hands again inside it in the vagina. Just make sure your hand goes, you know, under the rim. Right. Then you pull it out. Oh, I was thinking that you would pull that thing. No, you know, it, now that the, there is blood here, if you want to yeah. pull it in here, you know, it might split. Yeah, and, uh -huh. it, you know, you can mess things up around. So you just take it from the rim, pull it pull out, it out. E easily, and pour the blood in the toilet, flush it. You know, if you want to use this again, it means you have to boil the water, yeah. sterilize it. Yeah, the sterilization is very important. Mm -hmm. And for this, you cannot bury it, it does not decompose, but you can recycle it because it's silicon. Mm -hmm. You know, it can be recycled, and I've read uh, an article that says silicones can be recycled as toys. You know, most oh. sex toys are made of silicone. silicone. And, and uh, one of the articles, uh, a lady used this, she buried it after some years, nothing happened. Okay. So she just used it and then cut this part and then plant flowers there. <laughs> wow, <laughs> you see, creativity. <laughs> so because time is not on our side, well, let's go, go on with the other products. Yeah. So we have uh, tampons too. These mm -hmm. are disposable sanitary pads, uh, like the this is panty liner, disposable. Okay. You just use it like uh, the, the reusable. reusable. Yeah. So, and then you have also, you also have disposable sanitary pads. You use it the same way. And this is the heavy flow sanitary pads that we have. Also use it like the reusable sanitary pad. But for this, they come with a, uh, a lot of things they are very readily available M many people use this yes. but they come with a lot of uh, issues when it comes to uh, environment the waste that is generated in the environment you know yeah. all the parts that we use end up in the landfill you know mm -hmm. and we have parts are made of disposable parts are made of uh, plastic mm -hmm. and then chemicals perfume deodorant that yeah. is what prevents the odor during menstruation mm -hmm. and it also has what we call sap. 
this is pro this is uh, derived from crude oil so you cannot leave this on your body for a long time so it's important to change the part every three to four hours regardless of how much you bleed well, yeah it's yeah? very important because you don't want to expose yourself to this the vaginal area is so sensitive and these are uh, chemicals that can uh, cause a lot of damage you know, they can change the ph level they can give you a lot of uh, reproductive health issues so you cannot leave the part on you for more than six hours that's bad that's you have to you have to change it so it has uh, uh, all these chemicals and the plastic combination gives you what we call the cocktail effect which is reactions you know uh, vaginal discharges the, the 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 bacterials coming on together with the blood some people have you you learn that some people have uh, vaginal reactors Rashes anytime yeah. after mm -hmm. their period, it's because they're reacting to the chemical. Mm -hmm. So that's why it's important you explore different products and see what works for you so you can use it. Mm -hmm. And st studies have shown that each woman uh, will menstruate around 39 years, mm -hmm. and then you will use uh, 12,000 to 16,000 sanitary pads. Wow, in that's your lifetime, so just one person. Imagine if all these sanitary pads go to the landfill. We're Pollution, going to call like, lot of we, we are just harming more yeah, than at this yeah. point. So um, yeah. it's important that we, because we cannot flush this, it's going to cause blockage in the sewage yep. system. Mm -hmm. So it's important we discard it in a safe way because mm -hmm. if not, let's say in public toilet, the one who is going to clean the toilet, you're going to, yeah, you yeah, know, exactly. they, they are at risk of catching infections from the part that you use. So it's important when you use a part, you know, roll it round very very well you know mm -hmm. just so you protect whosoever is going to no. clean it or mm -hmm. because we don't generally separate waste in in the gambia here so we just okay. throw everything so those collecting waste those cleaning the bathroom also we need to make so we don't uh, put them at risk, at risk. Yeah. so just hold roll the part civilizedly in this way take a paper wrap it around and then put it in the dustbin some parts come with uh plastic packages yeah. that you can mm -hmm. use to wrap it, tie it, and then dispose them. But they all end up going to the landfill. Land Even if you bury it, it's, it's, it will take like 800 to 900 years for plastics to decompose. That's a lot of So years. that's, uh, I read an article that says uh, the first part that was used is still in the ground. <laughs> yeah. Oh, wow. Not this part, sanitary part that has been used. <laughs> because uh, it, it's statistics shows that or recycle so that it will take 500 to 800 years for sanit parts to be And course. then, I've, to my surprise, I've learned that reusable sanitary products have been in existence since 1932. Wow, and we yes, did and, not and, know and, about and, it. Yes, and menstrual cups too. We have different products like uh, uh, men the menstrual uh, cup, the menstrual digs, we have sponges, menstrual sponges. They, they're similar to the sponge we use for the makeup, oh. but these are natural sponges that are harvested from the sea, the Mediterranean Sea, <laughs> that you can use for, to do your makeup, to clean your cars, because they will not scratch the car and all, because they are so oh. soft. So they, they, they just like <laughs> the menstrual digs. You know, you have to wash your hands. Inside the, in the vagina, you absorb the blood. When you're done, you remove it, wash it, and then you can use it again. So the last thing we were going to talk about the products is the, the, tamp the tampons. Tamp so uh, I've always had this idea about tampons. I'm like, this is too much. Like it's too long. Then I got to know about it. Show the people. Show the <laughs> so people. So it's not actually it's not too long. Oh. So this is called the applicator, which is made mm -hmm. of plastic. So um, it's just like the cup, the hygiene part important because you're going to insert the tampon inside the vagina. So you have to wash your hands with soap and water. Mm -hmm. yeah, before, so this tampon comes in a package. Okay. You know, you have like 20 tampons in the, in the, in the carton, okay. in the box. So each of them comes with a separate cover. Okay. So you remove it. Mm -hmm. So it's always important, even with the parts, you know uh, whether it is light flow, heavy flow, or super. So oh. with the tampons, this is the biggest that oh, I could okay. find here. It's the super. We have lighter ones. Okay. You have the, the, the medium, the small. So it depends on how heavy you flow. Mm -hmm. So that is what is going to help you when picking the parts, the, the tampons and the parts too. Okay. So with this, you insert it in the vagina, just mm -hmm. like the cup. But here, 
when you insert this, because now it's, it's, this is the tip, it has the applicator. Mm -hmm. So you have to be very careful, you just don't take it and push, push it, it yeah. straight inside. You have to use it, uh, the vagina wall will guide, okay. will guide you. Mm -hmm. So you, put, you insert it as per the vagina wall. So if you are squatting, standing or sitting, it depends. So when you insert this inside the vagina, this part, you just push it. Okay. You push it this way. This is, uh, this is the applicator. Yeah. This, you discard it. Oh. You just throw this in the, in the dustbin. Mm -hmm. So this is the thing, the that only part that in. will be in the vagina. So it will absorb the blood. And this. <laughs> <laughs> so this, 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 this part of it, the rope, mm -hmm. if you can leave it hanging, but if you don't want, you can just, just tuck it around the vulva area. Yeah. Okay. So when you want to remove it, you just take this and pull, you know, put well, it around. <laughs> so this breaks, it breaks the hymen, hymen. too, just mm -hmm. like the menstrual cup. So like I said, if you are concerned. too much concern about hymen and then all that, you don't, don't go in for tampons. Mm -hmm. But like those who want to swim, you can use the tampon, back it up with panty liners or the menstrual cup and all that. Yeah, but that, there is a misconception about the hymen and virginity thing, you know. Yeah. It, it doesn't mean when you break your hymen, you are no more a virgin. Oh, yeah. So the, the, okay. the first time you lose your virginity is the first time you have sex with a man. man exactly. So if, you, if you're comfortable using tampons or yeah. menstrual cup, you can use it, mm -hmm. you know. But in, in our society, it's important if you want to use it, you're a teenager or you can discuss it with your parents, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. yeah, especially with menstrual cups that are now helping on with eradicating period poverty in the Gambia, mm -hmm. that a girl will not have to miss school because of period, so she can use menstrual cups, mm -hmm. which means she goes to school, she doesn't have to change parts, she doesn't have to worry about the toilet and all those uh, facilities, so she can go to school, when she comes back, she change it, which yeah. means we have to talk to the parent. Yeah. yeah. Ah, well, there you guys have it. Uh, thank you so much for explaining all of these things. We definitely learned. I don't know if you guys learned. Aisha, I did Lubari. Like, there are a lot of things that um, we needed to talk about, and it has been said. Thank you very much, Padmata. Mm -hmm. So, um, guys, this brings us to the end of the show. Thank you very much for watching. Please don't forget to subscribe, turn on your post notifications, comment down below what you have learned from this uh, show, and make sure you give the video a thumbs up and you share the video. So, as I promised last time, I'm going to give a shout out at every uh, at the end of every video. And today's shout out goes to Nana Sadie. Thank you very much for supporting the show, giving us suggestions, and basically just joining our family here in Jell on Jell of Girls. If you want a shout out, all you can do is click that subscribe button, turn on your post notifications, like the video, and comment down below that you have done all of this. So I will leave uh, Fatmata to give her closing remarks, then we go off the show. So it's a pleasure to be here, and then I hope uh, the message out there will uh, impact lives and it will help all of us come together and fight or end period poverty in the Gambia. Let's put the stigma aside. The taboos, the stigma, the hypocrisy surrounding women's exactly. health, you know, yeah. sex, menstruation. The moment we don't talk about these issues, we are exposing the young ones, you know. Exactly. When people know the right thing, I believe giving people the accurate information so they decide what to choose. Exactly. So let's work together, let's collaborate and end period poverty in the Gambia. So with Girls Pride, we are open to collaboration and Yeah, also give platform. them the contacts for uh, Girls, Girls Pride, Pride so that people that are not comfortable talking to their parents, they can come and have one-on-one -on -one conversations with you guys. So Girls Pride is on Facebook and Instagram and the page is Girls Pride. You can send us email on girlspridegambia at gmail.com or contact us on WhatsApp at triple nine one two eight zero or on official at Two nine eight five nine six six. So we are available to. We have online oh. counseling. You know, or you Amazing. can follow our page to get the information you need. Mm -hmm. okay. Thank, Thank you, you very so much. much. Thank you very much. We are honest. Uh huh. Exactly. Lily, we always wanted to talk about it. So thank you very much. Thank you very much, thank guys. You. Until we come your way next time. This was Jollof Girls. I am Ami Taylor. I should go. Bye, guys. Bye.